Hello and welcome back. Um, today we're going to service uh, someone's uh, grandpa's watch. This one is the typical old man strap with the uh, exceptionally well-worn uh, details. Um, signs of extraterrestrial life, etc. And um, yeah. What can I say? This is... Um, this might be a bit of a challenge, but um, hopefully it looks worse than it is. I'm definitely going to go for a good cleanup. Yes, you can see the um, crystal has completely sh sheared off and the customer has taped the crystal in place. Um, I'm not a fan of tape because that means I have to uh, clean, clean off the sticky goo left by it afterwards. Anyway, that's enough complaining from me, let's get cracking. First I need to remove the tape. That's not too bad. Well, oh, might as well get the crystal off. Well, the dial survives pretty well. I think this will look quite good uh, with the patina it has uh, with the new crystal and a little bit uh, cleaned up. We do have the inner bezel here, which is important we uh, keep because I do want to um, put that into the next crystal we're going to use. Um, but I think the best way of doing this is getting the movement out of the case first, but we can also get the uh, Let's get the strap off and, uh, well, bin it. But I'm not gonna bin it, it's the client's property, so I'm going to put it in a um, sealed bag and he can have it back. But we'll put a new strap on for him as a little bonus. I think he'll enjoy that. Yeah, let's get my um, strap removing tool. Okay, we have this little pin on the side. I love open, uh, So, I like when they're like this because it's just easy to remove the pins. There we go. Interesting detail, you only have the um, drilled out uh, lug on the one side and the other side is closed. So, uh, why that uh, design is the way it is, I don't know, but it uh, works for me. Let's see how easily the case back comes off. Okay, that case back does not want to come off at all, so uh, what I'm going to do is remove the hands first of all to make sure we don't damage those. Mm, it's so close to the dial, I would like to get the hands off with the dial. Um, Hmm, think, think, think. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue on a bolt on the case back and get this movement out. I'm going to put this in, um, hold this in place in my case vise or case holder and we'll take it from there. Okay, I did go under the microscope and I managed to get underneath the uh, hands nicely so I could lift them off and I reduce the risk of anything happening to them. And put them away. A bit more happy to turn this around. And uh, next I'm going to put some uh, super glue on the nut. Like so. And we're going to center that over the Centineer logo, like so. Then I'm going to put this to the side and let that dry. And um, when that glue has cured properly on the back, we're going to uh, open it. 
good thing is this is kind of lifted off a bit, so I'm not touching the dial with it being upside down. Just tighten that in place. I'm going to put this to the side for an hour, let that cure, and uh, we'll continue from there. Right, it's a couple of hours later, and this glue has uh, has hardened. So uh, let's see if we can... Oh, that was easy. That was almost too easy. There we go. That is a good way of getting the case back off without too much drama. And there's the movement. We have a caliber 1428U. Very nice movement. Um, actually, the next one I'm going to do a movement review on, so uh, that's convenient. And to be honest, it does not seem to be in too bad nick. The oscillating weight um, is actually pretty tight. I need to tighten it up? I don't think so. That's pretty good. Um, oh, that's good. So, next thing to do is, well, I'm going to drop this in a jar of acetone, dissolve the glue. But I also need to get the movement out of the case, so let's release the stem. And uh, unscrew the case clamps. Let's well screw them all the way out because they're uh, coming apart to be cleaned. Oops. So I guess the next thing, get the just get the dial off so we don't risk damaging it while we are working here. There we go. Oh, check it out. Some pretty cool decoration on the back of the dial. Um, very cool. It's got like a um, little crest there. Cannot remember seeing that before, so it's a new for me. But, uh, yeah, you can obviously see somebody taking pride in their work, and um, that's always something I like. That, that's super cool. And the dial, I think it's, um, I think it will look good, the new crystal, uh, especially with a um, gold cap case. Uh, it's going to have a nice patina. So the important thing is that we can get this, um, this um, tension ring for the crystal out. Uh, without um, hopefully not causing any trouble or damage. Let's uh, put the movement and dial to the side and see how we can get this out. So, the obvious problem is that the crystal is still in between the tension ring and the case. All right, I'm going to do this off camera and under the microscope because I'm going to try and minimize any risk. Actually, wait a minute, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to do this off camera uh, because I don't want to um, unnecessarily damage it because I got the camera in the way. Actually, it came out very easily. Sorry about that. It was just, just pushing it in the right location. So that's good. That means I have the tension ring which is also integral in holding the movement in place because it engages with the dial. I'm just going to manually clean this up a little bit and not go overboard because um, yep, I don't want to damage any of the print. Let's see. 
I think any attempt of trying to wash this is just going to wash away any detail. So I'm going to leave it as is and find a new crystal to put it in. Here you can see the remnants of the old crystal should come out fairly easily now as the tension ring is out. There we go. There's an extra tension ring in there. Something like this. Don't know what the extra tension rings do, but um, maybe I'm missing something. Cool, all right, well, I'm gonna clean up the case and the case back when that's uh, the acetone to dissolve the uh, glue. There's the outer ring of the old crystal. And uh, well, we can might as well just continue taking the base movement apart. So what I'm going to do is um, put this on time-lapse as there's no point um, filming me taking it apart and then back together again as it's pretty much the same process just in reverse. So um, yeah. Whoa, check out the grease there. <laughs> Somebody was a bit heavy handed on the uh, oiling side of things. Well, I suspect this uh, entire movement was uh, just dunked in a cleaning solution and um, never taken properly apart in the last service. Not the first time I've seen that. Okay, I've fitted the, um, the uh, shock protection jewels back into the balance and the balance is moving nice and freely. I've also, um, I've also re-greased and um, put the mainspring back into the barrel. It's pretty cool on this um, U description is actually for the uh, type of um, balance protection used here and it's uh, a turn its own in-house in construction which is also the inspiration for the citizen citizen um, parashock um, parashock um, shock protection so um, yeah it was uh, very advanced for its time now I'm going to take the uh, Balance, com balance uh, cock off the movement again. And we can start putting the gear train back in. I'm quite pleased to find that the movement's in uh, pretty good condition. All the pivots, etc., are. That look good. There's not too much wear in the um, bit wear in the gear train, and uh, it's nice considering it did look pretty rough when we first got the watch. So you see the second wheel here. It engages with the third wheel, and the third wheel actually inter uh, connects with the um, with the um, minute wheel that drives the uh, clutch pinion here on the other side. So, um, unlike a traditional layout where you have a center wheel that goes uh, the arbor goes through and has a cannon pinion on it. The cannon pinion is connected to this minute wheel that comes 
on the underside here. So yeah, pretty advanced stuff. Um, back in the day, the Turner, very early with that. Of course, that's what you find on the ETAs as well. As, uh, ETA and the Turner work very closely as ETA originally was set up by the Turner. So before we can put the um, bridge on, we're going to have to attach the crown wheel. And the crown wheel, we've got a couple of things we've got to do here. We've got to put the crown wheel in place. We also have to put the uh, ratchet. Well, here you can see the correct position of the click and the click spring. Um, it's a bit easier to show it under the microscope and um, also fitted under the microscope. It's quite fiddly. So with the uh, click now fitted, we can put the ratchet wheel in position. It's already disengaged itself. Well, I'll put the ratchet wheel in and I'll uh, secure the clip afterwards. They can, they're a bit fiddly. Anyway, for the ratchet wheel, I have a wig wag lever on the underside, which uh, needs to come in as well. They certainly did make this a lot easier later on with the new design. It works well, it's just a little, uh, it's just a little fiddly for the watchmaker, that's all. And that goes in there, I'll turn it around again. I'm just going to secure that. This should be the left hand threaded screw. I don't know if that's the correct one. Nope, oh, that's the wrong screw. Let me find the correct one. There we go, that's the correct screw. That's in place, but I need to put the um, engaged the ratchet spring again. I'll do that and we'll cut back to uh, hopefully they're being back together. Okay, we move on. Now everything is in place where it should be. but it uh, is going to be okay. Here we go. So, well, I guess I also want to put in the, I'll make sure I get the uh, setting lever screw in. Just like give the um, intermediate or the middle surface a tiny drop of oil on those. In case we get some moisture in, it's not going to rust in place. There we go.
Now you can see how this um, is moving smoothly. Very happy about that, the crown wheel. So the idea is when the movement is on being wound by the auto winder and this wheel will just simply move over and um, allow the um, around the <coughs> allow these uh, what would have been a ratchet wheel to um, turn around freely so the ratchet is on the crown wheel so it's uh, both a ratchet wheel and a crown wheel but still called as the uh, ratchet wheel for now The next thing we're going to do is fit the rest of the actual gear train. Tiny droplet of oil here. Get a photo for the client. And fit the gear train bridge. So I'm going to put this under the microscope, make sure that all the pivots line up before I secure the gear train. There we go, gear train big bridge all lined up, now ready to be secured in place. It only has two screws. Very nice finish on the uh, bridge screws. Beveled to fit in a uh, beveled hole, so very nice. find on this series of movement, the um, finish goes from uh, nice to very nice. Uh, sometimes you get the uh, chronometer rated versions with a little extra decoration, but uh, this one's very good. You can see it's got a nice finish around here, and um, you also have perlage underneath the uh, balance bridge. So yeah, impressive stuff. Now we can fit the um, well, what would have been the ratchet wheel, which has a nice style burst finish to it. You can also see how nice and freely the gear train is spinning. I think that will spin even nicer when it's oiled up. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to oil up the gear train. I'm going to turn the movement around and we're going to put, start fitting the uh, setting mechanism. Right, that's the... Um, that's the... Um, gear train all... Uh, Oiled up, now I'm going to um, fit the setting and winding mechanism. I'll start by fitting the uh, sliding pinion and the uh, winding pinion. So, as always, I put a little bit of blue grease on the contact surfaces. So any surface that will uh, move up against another surface. Includes the stem as well. And um, now I'm going to fit the setting lever. To do that, I need to hold it in place while we 
tighten the setting lever screw from the other side. The tricky part is getting the stem to engage correctly, which we have now, which is good. And uh, next we're going to start fitting, well, I can fit the yoke and the yoke spring. Again, a little bit of grease on the contact surfaces. Here comes the yoke spring. Now I'm going to secure it all with the setting lever spring. I'm putting a little bit of red oil on the contact posts of the intermediate uh, setting wheels. I accidentally put them in the same basket as the intermediate uh, water winder wheel, so I'm just going to make sure I get the right one. They do look quite similar. There we go. That's the right one. Good. So on this one, you can see there's a little beveled edge. So the beveled edge goes downwards and will be in contact with your sliding pinion. Then I have my um, my minute driving wheel here that engages here with the third wheel from the other side which we discussed earlier and there's a clutch here. The clutch has gotten a little bit of blue grease to ensure that that slides freely. This is the intermediate hour wheel. So to hold it all in place we have this we have this um, little bridge here. Nicely finished screws, both on the dial side and the winding side on this movement. And we can of course check that the winding works. It does and we can check the setting, which it does. Now we can turn the movement around and um, fit the pallet fork. So while oiling the pallet fork, we're going to put a droplet on the surface of the pallet jewel here that uh, is going when we move it along and release the power from the mainspring. Uh, it's going to we're going to transfer that uh, onto the escape wheel. 
And as we move the pallet back and forth, the escape wheel will be moving and the oil will then transfer over to the escape wheel's um, teeth surface. So, yeah. But first, I got to fit the um, pallet cock and secure that. And then we're going to um, oil it. Now for the moment of truth, the pallet has been fitted and oiled. We're going to see if it, this movement will tick again. Well, that's very promising. Well, that's nice. It's uh, ticking. That's half the battle. Now let's see how she performs. Well, that's just what I want to see. Plus one second a day. 0 0.1 beta, 268 amplitude. Perfect. So this is dial down position. Very good. I'm um, going to flip it around. Dial up position. Plus five seconds, that's okay. Amplitude dropped a bit, that might stabilize again as we did the movement around. Okay, so obviously the top pivot might be a little bit more worn than the low one, but um, yeah, two, absolutely that's uh, good enough for me. You got this is without the uh, auto winding mechanism on as well. That will increase the amplitude as you put more tension on the movement as it's winding. That looks very good. Let's do dial down. Very, very good uh, positional variation. Let's do uh, dial up position. So I mean not dial up, I mean crown up. That's crown facing north. Little bit of variation there, minus 10 seconds. Let's see what this, uh, yeah, minus five, stabilizing. Let's do crown east. So crown to the right. going at uh, look the amplitude is decent it's losing a little bit it's not plus two it just needs to catch up in six seconds that's fine and crown west position position that means uh, left that was right left I'm mixing things up here sorry see what it's doing zero seconds a day absolutely fantastic so yeah, super happy with the performance there, no uh, complaints. Let's put the watch back together. So before we're done, we've got to put the uh, auto mechanism, uh, auto winding mechanism back in place. Got two reverser wheels, which allow for the um, bi-directional winding. That essentially works that uh, no matter what direction the oscillating weight is going, the gearing in here will allow the um, wheels to turn in the right uh, direction, the intermediate winding wheels, uh, winding the movement. 
held in place by this little um, this little bracket here. favorite water winding mechanisms so easy to work on and one screw a few reverser wheels and you're in business just turn this lever over and that secures the lower reverser wheels So now we're going to fit the uh, water wonder bridge onto the movement itself. <clears throat> I find if you manually wind it, it does uh, easily engage like so. I'm not going to fit the uh, oscillating weight until I have the movement in the case. And that is to uh, prevent damage while fitting the hands, just in case. So what I have done with the case is I've cleaned it up and I have uh, fitted a new crystal with the old uh, tension ring on the inside. I've getting the, uh, got the old uh, gasket out, um, <clears throat> which I got the remnants of here. You can tell that the rubber was pretty shot and dry, so that had to be uh, pretty much picked out piece by piece. So what I'm going to do now is loosen the dial screws well there's a dial screw and it seems to me that uh, one of the dial screws has worked itself out um, which is not a problem I'm gonna have a look in my drawer or in the cleaning basket and see if we can find it. there we go it was just in my cleaning basket so that was fine That in place. Just turn it one thread and then we can uh, fit the dial. There we go. Put a little bit of red oil on the um, minute pin in there and we can fit the hour wheel. Very nicely made with the uh, the dial washer spring already integrate as an integrated part. <clears throat> Got the dial, goes on straight on. with the dial onto the movement. Tighten the dial feet. Next we're going to fit the hands. So being a no date movement, we can uh, pretty much fit the hour hand at random. So 
So uh, what I need to make sure is that it uh, stays clear of the uh, Atenomatic raised logo. I don't want to have it too close to the dial as it will be um, hard to remove later on. Let's have a look. I'm going to have a look under the microscope and see how it looks. That's very good. Now that it's already aligned to 12 o'clock, we will fit the uh, minute marker. minute marker but the minute hand again you've got to be careful not to have anything touch very tight tolerances here As you can see that's just about not touching on the rear and the front and uh, fortunately, the lineup is pretty bad because I just missed that. Um, let's go around. Uh, it's just a little bit, um, let's get it a few minutes back. So now the uh, minute now marker lines up nicely at 12. Um, Go to fit the second hand. There we go. Again, this has been uh, just a little bit squeezed by the crystal, so I'm going to uh, reshape that a bit and get that. So back. now we have the um, hands all lined up and uh, looking good. I've cleaned the dial up as much as I can. Very sensitive varnish. Uh, but I'm going to leave it because it kind of has that golden patina to it, which will look good in this uh, gold cap case. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, fit the case clamps. There we go. Another thing I'm going to do is uh, replace this crown simply because uh, it's uh, worn plated, it's not original, and um, yeah, client hasn't asked me to do it, but I'll put it in the bag together with this strap, and this will just be a little bonus. So I'll uh, see if he notices. So I got the um, Crown on, I actually ran out of uh, juice on the phone, so it's charged again. So we could uh, film the rest here. Uh, so now I can set the time, I can wind it. So the idea, the idea with the uh, hidden crown is that it's hidden and doesn't go into your wrist. You can still wind it, but uh, being an automatic, the idea is that the automatic mechanism will do most of the work. So I didn't have any um, gaskets, case back gaskets, that fits uh, perfectly in this groove, so I've ordered one. But uh, in the sake of this video, um, I will put the watch together and we will um, 
call it a day, but I'm also going to fit a new gasket when it arrives uh, before the watch gets sent back to the customer. Um, really, the only remaining thing to do is fit the oscillating weight. So I like to put a drop of lubrication in the ball bearing itself. Secure, secure that with the uh, oscillating weight screw. Make sure that's nice and tight. See that the oscillating uh, or the auto winder mechanism works as it should. Good. Very good, efficient uh, auto winders on these. No complaints. You see, there's a little bit of um, pitting in the case. Not much I can do about that. Um, so yeah, when I get the uh, gasket, I'll open it again. Put the case back gasket in for the client. And um, yeah, happy days. I think you should be very happy with the way this watch turned out. You can see the uh, bolt has been dissolved from the case back. And yeah, what a transformation. Let's find a uh, nice strap to go with this one. Well, behold the watch in its full glory out in the sun. Beautiful Eternomatic Centineer 61. I, um, I think this is a truly stunning watch. Uh, the patina on the dial really looks good when the uh, crystal's been uh, replaced and we got everything back together. I know that the movement's in good condition and uh, definitely going to keep good time. Uh, I think the patina really goes well with the uh, gold cap case. The new strap looks really good on the watch. I do believe this was the client's father's watch and uh, I think he'll be very happy to get it back in working condition. I know I would, would be happy to get it back like this. Um, personally, I would definitely wear the watch. Uh, I think it's, I actually really like this one, especially the way it was before and the transformation. But um, yeah. If you like this kind of thing, check out my website, mitka.co.uk. That's a UK-based website uh, where it, uh, I have several posts and uh, I got my uh, vintage store shop. So if you want to buy a vintage watch that's been fully serviced by myself, please check it out. Um, yeah, a bit of advertising for myself. And uh, besides that, I hope you have a great week. And uh, until next time, have a good one.